Kim Kim from Stamping Imperfection. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I would love to have you click subscribe and click that bell to get notifications every time I upload a new video. And I would love it if you give this video a thumbs up. So today I'm participating in an Instagram hop that is a collaboration between Maker Forte Color Hive Inks and Picket Fence Studios Life Changing Blender Brushes. So Picket Fence Studio sent me these brushes and I love these brushes. I have had a set of these since they came out with these brushes and these are still my favorite brushes. I have brushes from all different companies and um, this set is really interesting because you get those smaller ones and then you get some kind of medium sized ones and you get these three really large ones. So those are the ones that I use the most, like the larger sizes and the medium sizes I use the most. The smaller sizes I use for uh, doing like tiny spaces on stencils when I want to blend different colors or add different colors to the stencils and these sizes here are really nice for small spaces too i just love the density of the brushes they're very soft they clean beautifully like i've literally washed them with a drop of dawn dish soap swirling it in my hand under the faucet rinsing it out really well and then airing it dry standing up and they 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 clean beautifully so here I have, um, I'm going to use this um, Fall Gnomes stamp set and the Rustic Pumpkin Patch stamp set from Maker Forte. I uh, love these two new sets. They just came in the mail yesterday, so I was very excited to make a whole bunch of stuff with them. And I, for my inks today, I'm using the Color Hub inks. These are from Maker Forte. I have Grand Canyon, Cotswold Green, Red Leicester, uh, English Mustard, and my favorite black ink pad, which is the Remarkable Eclipse Black Ink Pad. I love this one for Copic coloring. It is perfection. These are dye inks, so you can't use them to, you can't use this black ink um, to stamp something and then watercolor it because the ink will run. If you use the ink and you want to watercolor something, you want to stamp over the top of it with clear embossing powder and um, heat set it, and then you're good to go with watercoloring. So I like to take, when I get new brushes, to new blender brushes, I like to condition them a little bit. So I have a piece of scrap paper off to my side, and I'm kind of loading up the ink here. One of the things, I love the shape of these brushes. You can see the way I'm holding it. I've sort of got my thumb and my um, index finger holding the edge of the brush itself. And my other th three fingers are wrapped around the handle. And I'm very gently applying the ink. Like I'm putting no pressure at all on the, the top of the brush. And it just they just blend so beautifully so that first color by the way was English mustard and I'm using red Lester which is a really nice orange and um, sometimes you get little blobs because I didn't go off the edge in that one spot but the secret of blending is to keep putting on layers of color until you get the blend that you love like just keep blending ink on until it's perfect for you. Whatever you see is perfect. Sometimes I want a really smooth blend with the color looking um, perfectly smooth. Other times I want to see some variation in color. So here you can see I'm, I pulled out the yellow brush again. So I started with a yellow and then I used a different brush for the orange and then when I was done with the orange I pulled out the yellow brush and went over the line between the yellow and the orange just to smooth out that blend. Now I've pulled out the larger brush for the green again this is the Cotswold green this is my favorite green and I love 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 this color combination for fall. So I'm going to get it a little overzealous with my green here, not going to lie. I got a little overzealous. I was daydreaming while I was doing this, 
and I'm going to kind of wipe out my yellow, but it's fixable. So everything is fixable. So I blend the green in, then I pull out the yellow again, and I really um, add a lot of yellow here. So I'm gonna go over this a few times. I wanna go over the line between the green and the yellow, and the line between the orange and the yellow, and I really want to get my yellow to stand back out again, and um, I want a smooth blend. A lot of times in person, it looks so different than it does on camera too. I don't know why. So this is Grand Canyon Brown. I really like this brown because it's got a, a touch of red in it. So it's a really nice red brown. I was really excited when they came out with this color last fall. It was such perfect timing to come out with a, a brown in the fall. And it was such a great color for fall because it's got a little bit of red in it. So it just works so great for uh, you, you know anything beachy you want to do and your, any scenes with ground in them. I just want to make a fall colored blend. And um, this paper that I'm using is cut at three and three quarters by five. It is actually a piece of scrap paper. So I love taking my scrap papers and um, making ink blends. So this is the Mr. Perfect PhD from Maker Forte. It's a Mr. bottle, and it's got a nice spray Mr. on it that works a lot like the one on the Distress Sprayer. What I like about this bottle is that it is an eight ounce bottle, so it holds a lot of water. I do a lot of techniques to use water. So I spritz that a couple of times, let the water react for a few seconds, dabbed it off with my um, my microfiber cloth and uh, then I'm going to set it aside so the paper dries. I clean up my workspace. That's always important because these are dye-based inks. And again, you saw me just use the water to clean it up so you can use water to clean them up. But um, those dye-based inks will react with water and other liquids and um, that you will transfer those all over your projects if you don't clean up in between steps. I do like to have, I have a glass surface and I just have a silicone mat on top of it so that um, the glass doesn't show the glare. I quite like uh, both the silicone surface and the glass surface to craft on so I'll use one of those when I'm doing ink blending. So I'm pulling out another piece of scrap white paper, and I'm just gonna use this to uh, stamp my gnomes. I pulled two gnomes off the set. I definitely want some of these rustic pumpkins. I love this set. I think it's, it's so pretty. The sentiments are fun in the gnome set. There's one sentiment in the pumpkin set, happy fall, y'all. And I think it's just really a great, uh, stamp set. It's got some really fun images and I love coloring pumpkins and gnomes with my Copics and that's what I'm going to do. Like I'm stamping this with my Color Hive Eclipse Black ink, which I should have re-inked. Now these inks from Maker Forte, by the way, are foam ink pads. I love the hexagon shape. Actually, I think they're octagons. They're, it's an octagon shape. I think it's eight-sided, yes? And um, I love the shape of it because I can um, stamp directly on paper with my ink pad and use that shape as a background for an image, and I love it. Um, but they are foam pads, and they do tend to need to be re-inked more often, although I use my ink pads so much every day that um, I always purchase the re-inker with the ink pad. So I went ahead and colored all those. This is a card I finished yesterday. I was experimenting with all this stuff. I shared this on the Maker Forte blog. I love the way it turned out. I love the color combination. And um, I just wanted to make some more fall cards with this color combination. So that's what I have here. And um, then I also used some of the smaller blender brushes with this dandelion stencil that came in the picket fence brush set. So I used some of the Maker Forte inks, the yellow, the brown, and the green. Same ones that I used for that ink blend to 
um, create the background with the stencil. I'm going to pull out this really nice reddish orange paper that I have in my stash for a background for um, that dandelion background. And I'm trying to decide what I want to do on this one. I kind of want to do a metallic. In my head, I just want a little bit of metallic on this one. The card I made yesterday, I used a nice chocolatey brown color, but I sort of want some metal detail here. So I'm going to cut these down. I'll just cut them down enough to have a little border peeking out around the edge. So here I'm using my Score Buddy and my Teflon Bone Folder from Maker Forte to um, create my card bases. And again, these are papers I pulled out of my um, scrap bin. So I want to, I'm just trying to use that scrap bin up before I cut new pieces. So I'm putting a, like a suede brown card base with the gold metal and ink blended background that I created. And I'm using my tape runner only because uh, it's a little bit warped and I want it to be very flat on my card base. I could have run it through my um, laminator or my die cut machine just to flatten it, but I um, I just didn't. And it, I tried to flatten it with um, some weight and that didn't flatten it enough for me, but the tape runner really flattens it out, so that's perfect. I'm using just a regular white card base below my dandelion background. So now I've got the two card bases ready, and then I play around with these sweet images. I colored these in with my Copic markers, I find ink blending and um, making backgrounds with stencils and coloring with my Copics be very relaxing. I decided that I also cut them out, by the way, with my brother Scan and Cut. Um, and I felt like it was a little busy. I loved the gnomes and the sunflower on that dandelion background, but I kind of wanted to separate them a little from the background without adding another color or overwhelming um, the whole picture with a big white circle. So I pulled out a piece of vellum. Maker Forte has very pretty vellum. And I'm cutting it with one of the nested circle dies. And the dies from Maker Forte are also fantastic, by the way. I love these. I love the packaging they come in. A nice tag board um, envelope. They come on that magnet sheet. They're coated in an enamel. There's a Velcro closure on that car that tag board envelope they come in. It's storage already. I don't have to figure out storage for those. I can just put them in my basket. So now I'm just playing with the arrangement of these. I do fuss a lot. And I am going to pop them up on some foam squares. And so I just fuss a bit with them because... In all honesty, I really liked the coloring job I did on that one leaf, and I am realizing I'm just going to have to sacrifice that. So I fussed a few more minutes, decided how I wanted it laid out, and I added a couple of nice big foam dots on the back of each of these gnomes. I think they're so cute, and I used some fun colors that coordinated with the colors that I used on the um, ink blending and on the stencil. And by the way, those small stencil brushes worked beautifully on the back or on that stent to add different colors to the stencil. Because you can see I have three different colors on the same stencil, and those tiny brushes work beautifully for that. I always start with the lightest color, by the way. I uh, always start with my yellow, and um, I add my liquid glue on the back of the vellum underneath the images. I'm going to add some foam dots on the back of those pumpkins and then all that's left is my sentiments and my bling which is I'm using the outrageous crown jewel gems to add some color. I have this fantastic Thanksgiving sentiment set that I love and it's got this giant give and then it's got another stamp that's smaller that says give thanks. So I'll just use the thanks part of that. So I'm pulling it out to see how I want to lay it out there. And now I'm going to pull out um, the uh, rustic pumpkin patch set and decide what I want to, you know, what sentiment I want to put on with the gnomes. So I'm going to go ahead. I really want to stamp that give on 
directly on the card base and then I want to pop the thanks up as like a little sentiment strip. So I'm going to again use my um, Eclipse Black ink. I love this ink. And I do stamp this a couple times um, just because my ink pad needs to be re-inked. That's how I know if my ink pads need to be re-inked. If I have to stamp more than once, it needs to be re-inked because when you get these ink pads, they generally stamp perfectly the first time for quite a while and then you need to re-ink them. That's how you know. So I went ahead and stamped um, my other sentiments. I'm going to use the Happy Fall, y'all. That is from the same um, thankful and grateful stamp set with the other sentiment. So I, I just like the font and I think the size of this sent, these sentiments is very good. Now I have all of the sentiment strip dies that I've ever gotten in any die set all in one envelope. I just keep them all together so that I can use them anytime I want. I keep them on my desk and I get really good um, I get, my sentiments are much straighter since I started doing this. Now I'm having a little trouble with my little my little mini here, which I never have trouble with. And I think it's because I'm trying to stick it through with that die hanging out. So I just turned that around and um, I feel like I'm just not having a very coordinated day. It's been one of those weeks between the hurricane sitting over our home in Florida for five hours. It was terrible. And um, some medical stuff that was very difficult. Um, so my I, feeling a little brain fog, I guess. So I'm enjoying being able to sit down and do something creative. It just always makes me feel better. So I'm adding, I just cut um, some of those foam squares in half and put on the back of these. I generally use, I have some 1 8 inch um, strips, but I'm not finding them on my desk. I think I've actually used them all. So it's time to get another package of those. And I'm using some smaller foam bits that I have around there. Um, I'm trying to use up old stuff in my stash. Like, I don't know if you're trying to do that too, but like I have some stuff I've had a while, I just want to use it up so I don't waste it and then I can move on with new stuff. So here are the Crown Jewel Gems. I like to use some liquid glue here and I like glue tubes. Maker Forte also has a nice Maker's Magic um, glue that I use sometimes. Um, I like things with tips on them. This is the Magic Wand Tool from Maker Forte. It's a... Um, craft pick on one end and a jewel picker on the other end. I really love this tool. It's one of my favorite tools. This and their on the hook tweezer. So I, I'm just adding those crown jewel gems for a bit of bright orange. And that completes my cards, friends. I hope you enjoy this. Please give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe while you're here. And you can use the links below. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.